while we are talking about the Cardinals, uh, I wanted to uh, to mention that the Cardinals signed my brother, my younger brother, Vaughn, who is three and a half years younger than myself. And when I was a senior in high school, he was a, a freshman in high school. And we played on the same basketball team. And he was the number five player on the basketball team. So it was real neat. And, uh, and so when he graduated from high school in 1957, then he, he came up to try out for the Cardinals just like I had done uh, before then. And I had a good rookie year in 1956. You know, I was seven wins and six losses, but you know, for just starting out at the big league level without any other experience in professional baseball, that was real good. And and so, and I was doing, I was a starting pitcher in 1957, but, but they signed my brother in May that year when he graduated from high school. He came up and tried out, and he signed for $50,000 just like I had signed, uh, a bonus player. And uh, and so he went you know, straight to the big leagues, and we were uh, roommates, and we traveled by train, and it was real neat to have my younger brother, and I could kind of be his mentor, mentor and... and uh, and introduce him to the big leagues, and I was the big brother. See, I've had one year experience, <laughs> so uh, so that was real neat. And and Vaughn won his first four games, and it was qu quite exciting. And every time he would start, uh, they'd fill the stadium up in St. Louis with standing room only, and so so they got their money back on Vaughn really fast, the fifty thousand dollar bonus. And uh, and so we uh, we got big publicity because we were brothers, and it reminded people of the Dean brothers, uh, Paul and Dizzy Dean, for St. Louis. And so St. Louis was kind of going wild at that time, and we got uh, major write-ups in even Life magazine and uh, Sports Illustrated, and uh, so we're being covered uh, nationally. And Vaughn was, especially he was 18, he was a bachelor, and that was my first year of marriage, actually. And uh, and Vaughn was getting fan mail uh, like Stan Musial was, you know, just buckets of fan mail all the time. And uh, we'd spend, uh, after the ball game, we'd go out to the parking lot and we'd sign autographs for the kids and young people for uh, a long time. And, and so it was an exciting time, and we got into a pennant race with the Milwaukee Braves and almost won the pennant. We tailed off at the end, and, uh, but uh, they even had a, a, a train load of people from Oklahoma that came, the Vin, uh, Lindy and Vaughn Express, you know, and it came to St. Louis from Oklahoma. So, so, so we had a lot of really neat uh, experiences that year together. So I wanted to kind of bring that in, and the next year just totally fell apart. <laughs> and uh, uh, Vaughn uh, went to school at Abilene Christian Uni uh, College, and uh, he didn't play basketball like he had normally been playing basketball for year. He was an all-state basketball player, and so uh, I, I think this hurt him more than anything is changing a pattern uh, that had. A physical pattern in in sports that have been there for a long time. I think changing that. But anyway, the next spring in 1958, everything fell apart, and Vaughn uh, he had great control the year before, and all at once he lost his control. He lost his ball movement, his speed, everything. It was I've never seen a person change so much in my life. He just messed up, just really messed up, and uh, and got sent to the minor leagues. Uh, at that point, because at, at that point in time, uh, you could be a bonus player, but they could send you down. So they changed the rules on bonus players. And uh, so I would keep up with him uh, everywhere he would go. But as a pitcher, he could not, he went to AAA and uh, fill the ballpark, pitch, couldn't pitch. And he'd go down to Double A and fill the ballpark and he couldn't pitch. And he went all the way down to Class D. 
you know, filling ballparks all the way because of the publicity he had received, and yet he, he could not pitch anymore. So he started back up as an infielder, and uh, and actually he worked his way up to Triple A as as a good third baseman. He he shifted to third and uh, was a good RBI man, and but he never made the big leagues again. So he he played nine years in the minor leagues. So I just wanted to throw that in on on his career. And then in uh, 58, I was having my problems too because I came up as a three-quarter overhand pitcher with a heavy fastball, a sinking fastball, a natural uh, movement, and I lost it too. And I think it, when I quit playing basketball, I think it affected the baseball. And, uh, and so, so in 58, I started two baseball games that I didn't get even one hitter out. And, and, and so I was having my problems as well. And I went down to the minor leagues for one month in 1958 to Omaha, Omaha Cardinals. And, uh, and then came back, back up to the big leagues. And so, uh, so anyway, that was uh, my first, uh, I, I look at my career as making four major comebacks. And so, so that was the first uh, major uh, when things went bad for me. And then I, I, I turned that around and changed my delivery at the big league level. And entirely different delivery, straight, straight overhand, small stride where I had a, a large stride or long stride before. And, and, and just changed the whole thing to be successful and I led the league in 1959 and 1960 in relief pitching. And so that launched me into a whole new career of being a stopper in the bullpen. And, and uh, they said that I could, uh, I could get ready from point zero, warming up, to red hot in one minute. I didn't have to waste it in the bullpen. I didn't have to throw just over and over because I could get ready so quick. And uh, so uh, I had the temperament for that kind of work to come in under pressure with the bases loaded and everything and, and stay cool and and uh, throw strikes and and get the hitters out so so uh, that that became my uh, main thing is is relief pitching and in those days in when I started out relief pitching we'd pitch maybe two or three innings not like today where they come in and, and just pitch one inning or or only pitch when you have a lead or something like that. So uh, I came into a lot of tied ball games and that's why I picked up a lot of wins. Uh, uh, I'm number two in lifetime wins for relief pitchers. So I ha had 119 wins in relief. And Hoyt Wilhelm is number one and he had 124 wins in relief. But uh, relief pitchers today don't pick up that many wins because if you're a top uh, relief pitcher, then they won't let you come into a ball game in in a, a tied game situation where you're going to pick up a win or where you're one run behind. Anyway, a lot of my saves, and the save rule has changed over the years many, many times, but uh, a lot of my saves were done by pitching two or three innings. And, and, and to save a ball game. And, and so it's not like it is today. It's, it's just, uh, uh, you know, baseball is, is great in stats. There are stats for everything. And, uh, and they're coming up with new stats today even that uh, help determine performance better uh, because it, it's just hard to have uh, the, the stats is going to be a full uh, judge of performance. Anyway, we could talk a lot about stats in baseball because that's, uh, baseball is full of those things, so.